so this uh, following figures are for consumption and GDP question one the growth in both real consumption and real GDP to one decimal place have you calculated it which formula did you use for calculating the growth of C nice the first group, Tuesday group, calculated the change in consumption as growth. They didn't realize that this was about growth rate. So what they did was this. They had all of them. That was surprise, surprising result. So what they did was change in C. So they calculated the change in C only. Yeah, this this is that's wrong. Am I? One second. Gonna correct. There's a mic. Right, so, so what you should have done it, or they should have done it, was this C0. Yes, delta C over C0, or C1, so C2 minus C1 over C1. Now, if you've done that, I will just put, jot down the results only, rather than asking you to calculate it. This is not difficult for you, is it? Yeah. Filling up the table. Yeah? Growth rate of consumption between two periods. Period T and T plus 1. So that's basically if I do the first one. Okay, I'll do the first one. Growth rate of C is equal to uh, 7363 minus 73335 over... 7333.5 equals uh, 0 0.4 so this is 0 0.4 minus 1.5 0 0.8 0 0.3 minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1 1.4 and 2.4 if you have a different set of results, please let me know. Or is anything different here from what you have calculated so far, please do let me know. Then this is for growth, GDP, 0 0.5, minus 4 .4, 2.1, 1.7, 0.5, 0.4 and 1.8 so the uh, now C as a percentage of GDP now is Uh, that's it. Uh, this is based on actual data in the U European Union. Uh, consumption is the largest expenditure in output. How do you get the last row? Um, 7,333 times uh, divided by 13,037. C as a percentage of GDP. Clear? Okay, so what I, well, if there is an arithmetic calculation error, please correct it. So that thing is basically C over GDP. So that I, I pick, picked that and this. this. And this is 56.2%. Then you have uh, other components, yeah? Investment, government, and M and uh, net exports, X minus M here. We're just looking at consumption in this case. So this is actual data, this is real data. So if there is a fluctuation in GDP as we studied this week, 
is most likely due to consumption, change in consumption, or investment maybe, it's on private investment, I. Yeah. Any questions so far, guys? And is this clear? I am glossing over a lot of things here without showing any calculus because this is because you guys are math students. So we're not, we shouldn't be spending much time on arithmetics or algebra. Yeah, we should be uh, thinking like economists now for an hour or so. You can do your math at home. This is a math part, basically. Yeah? Now, this is an economics part now. It requires a bit of thinking. Yeah, the other one requires a bit of mechanics. Right, so this, this is a real math uh, econ part. So read it, please. So C is a CD, consumption is a CD, net savings is S, net taxation is uh, T, government expenditure is G, factor payments are national income, part of national income, oh, basically national income, they make up the national income. Expenditure on imports is M, investment I, expenditure on exports is X. Just to remind you, if you, rem if you don't remember, now, attach the correct letters to each of the terms you, you have written on the diagram. Now, we will have to pick people, starting with the first, first row, first person here. Do you want to answer the first question? What's, what should we put here? What's this? Factor payments. What are they? Go ahead. What are factor payments? Rent for capital, rent payments for hiring capital, and what else households supply to? Yeah, that makes sense now, right? So what else do you provide us? What? Yeah, for employment, yeah? For working, jo for, the, uh, for working for the company, you receive salaries, yeah? You also provide capital in the form of your savings and all this stuff or in, in form of land rents, if you own something, yeah? Maybe why? Yeah. This is also why, yeah. National income is why, yeah. Factor payments, national income, are all fine. So this is the national income why, in terms of letter, or factor payments, you can think of it that way as well, if you want. Okay, second, um, what goes out of the households now, please, you? What do we do? We purchase things from this domestic limit. So what, what letters? Yes, yeah, CD, right? So make sure that consumption is CD, not just C, because C is CD plus imports. We consume imported goods as well. Um, but it's taken away usually from the GDP equation. We, we remove it uh, for, to avoid double counting. So this is CD. Right, now you are... So what are these called together? Expenditure. Hmm? Is it expenditure? No. Did you hear that? Withdrawals. Oh, withdrawals. withdrawals, exactly. So I guess you know what it is, yeah? Um, another name, and if you're reading a different book, it's also called leakages. It's leaking out of the economy. Leakages. Um, so um, do you want to tell us the first one now? Um, expenditure on Ah, OK. You want to put the inputs here. One. Yeah, fine, fine. M. Yeah, second one. And now you, you you're moving back to the uh, to the back row, please, guys. Any of you can start. What's the second? Taxation. Tax. Net taxes, yeah. Net taxes. We pay net tax. Part of our income goes to taxes. Part. So, uh, what happened here? So, part of our income goes to consumption, imported goods, taxes, and what else do we do? Now, last one. Let him. Let the order go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Last of the withdrawals. Save. Yeah, we save in banks. We put some of the money. So all together, these, remember? Equal to that. Income goes out in the form of out of the house in form of consumption expenditure, we buy some, it 
uh, domestic consumption imports, we pay taxes out of it, and we save the rest. Okay, now next uh, we start uh, with you, and what's this all together? Injections into the economy. Um, so the first one? Private investment, thank you. And you? Uh, yes, experts, and one of you? G? What's D? Yeah, governments buy from firms, yeah? Also, the tax goes out as government expenditure. And not this, this is a very closed economy in the sense that in the, it is partially closed because we import and export, but we ignore the borrowing from outside. Banks, uh, sorry, government also borrow from outside. Americans, for example, are borrowing to the neck now these days. They have 21 trillion debt, indebted, I think, about 21 trillion. Exactly the same as their GDP. They're just borrowing to maintain the current spending habit they've developed. They are the biggest spenders. If you think of America as a household, they are the most indebted nation in the world. Well, in the sense that they are also most in Ireland as uh, more than GDP, of course, but in terms of magnitude, amounts of money they, 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 they borrow is the highest in the world, 21 trillion. Okay, three now. Okay, we'll carry on, the, carry on asking you guys to answer the third question. Read it first, please. Understand what the question is about, and then we start answering. So we hold everything constant in this case. We just assume that this is the only change. All right, so uh, 3A, uh, guys at the back, who wants to do that now? So a council fund, a council funds the building of new libraries. Is it an injection? If it's an in injection, is it increase or decrease in injection? Or if it's a withdrawal, is it an increase or decrease in withdrawal? Which one is it? See, this is, this is economics when you are quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not mathematics, two plus two equal five. Or statistics. Okay, what do you think? Injections and increase or decrease? Increase, yes. G is a government spending, isn't it? Council is part of the government. So G increases if the council spends the money, injects money into the economy. So basically, to fund the library, they will hire a, a private company, to building company, which then hires workers which then buys cement, buys raw materials, which then buy everything. Basically, this is all going into the economy. The money that government is injecting is going into the economy. Next, B. So we have our uh, friend sitting there. So uh, the government raises tax rate pressure. Is it a withdrawal? And uh, what happens to government withdrawal? Increase or decrease? Uh, decrease. It's decreasing. Why? So when the ta uh, uh, tax-free threshold is raised, will the government take more money or not? Tax-free threshold means, let's say you're earning 30,000 a year as a gross salary. Government tells you, okay, uh, if you originally were receiving 10,000 tax-free threshold, in other words, 10,000 away before we tax you, you now are given 15,000 tax-free. So what happens is now that now, the government now will charge tax on 15,000 only after they gave you 15,000 tax allowance. So, tax, taxable income declined, right? So, that means government's tax revenue declined because now they are receiving less tax from you because tax free threshold is higher. You're taking more money home before you pay tax. So, in that case, it's the withdrawal, which is correct. Tax is a withdrawal, but it's a decrease, isn't it? In withdrawals. Yeah, you correctly answered it as a multiple choice question. <laughs> but when it comes to explanation, it's important. Okay, let's go 
uh, do another round, starting with you, C. Government reduces child benefits. Remember what government does. You pay tax in return, others receive benefits. So in the end, if I go back here, these are, I should have reminded you that these are net savings, net taxes. This net tax means, net tax means tax minus benefits. Now, revise your answer now, please. <laughs> Think about it differently now. Now you know what to do, right? Net tax is tax minus all the transfers that you receive as a household. So if you, let's say, if, if this goes up, if this goes up, then this goes down, right? So, net tax is declining. Withdrawals are declining. Mm. Yeah, because it's paying back whatever it received. And net is lower in that case. Tax is when you pay, benefit is when you receive. So, if the benefit is increasing, then government is getting less than what it used to be getting. So, net tax is declining. So, withdrawals are declining. Make sense, guys? It didn't make sense to her. You. Did you get it? Did you understand it? Can I see the question, please? Oh, you didn't see the question. No, I didn't see, but... Do you know, but, the... Yeah, go ahead. But isn't it if you say benefits decreases, your net, net taxation increases even? So, did I read it increase? You said... Uh, increase. Yeah. Also, answer would be the opposite of what I just said. Because my example was about increasing yeah. benefits. But the question is about the reduction, apparently. So that confused you. Yeah. Should have raised your hand then. <laughs> yeah, the question about reduction in child benefits. So withdrawal, correct, but increase. Because they, now they reduce the child benefit means government is now not paying more as before. It's paying less, but is receiving more as a result. So withdrawals increase. Sorry, I, I gave the example for increase and I simply took it to a question as a, took it as a question myself. So it's a reduction in child benefits means increase in the uh, withdrawals. So more money is leaving the, leaving the household. Did it make sense, everyone? It's the only confusing part was my own making. <laughs> okay, uh, D, who wants to answer it? Fever tourists, no, no. We'll, we'll do the rounds. Let them give them a chance as well. Okay, go ahead. Tourists visiting the UK. Fewer of them. Why is it withdrawal? Is anyone taking money from you? As a household, are you paying to someone? Are you paying to buy imports? No. Are you paying tax? No. Are you paying savings here? No. So it must be the receipts declining. So what's this then? Injections. Remember. Experts include tourism. People are buying our services when they visit here, when they see Big Ben, and when they sit on a London Eye, they're actually paying for, exp for service, which is not located in their own country. So we're exporting services, tourism services. So um, if fewer tourists uh, visit us, that means fewer purchases from us. Injections will decrease. Yeah? Less amount. I think this will be the case in after the Brexit. Most likely case that uh, uh, Central, Central Bank of England is uh, predicting. So E. Um, injection increase. So firms anticipating a rise in consum consumer demand borrow more money in order to build up their stocks. So uh, it's injection because it is um, in US. Investment, yeah? By the banks invest in. So basically, borrowing is an investment by the banks into the companies. Basically, when your company borrows it, you are investing. Yeah, you don't borrow it and put it into your cushion. You, you, you spend it, right? So injection, and is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing, increasing. okay, good. Um, any of the two?
So let me read it. Consumers demand more goods that are domestically produced and total consumption doesn't change. So total consumption doesn't change. It's just we shifted from imports to consumption, right? Uh, domestic consumption. So what was the answer then? Withdrawal decrease, exactly. We shifted money from imports to consumption, which reduced our withdrawals, or the withdrawal from the economy. The money went into the economy through the consumption route. So what happened is that um, initially, consumption was C, D, plus M. Let's say 50-50. If we had a, a pound, we spent 50p here and 50p there. Now, without the total consumption being affected, we spent 70p here and only 30p here. So withdrawals decrease as a result, because we are now purchasing more of CD. Okay? Correct? So next. People invest more money in banks and building societies. What do you think? Not able to see it? Yes. Okay, I'll zoom it in. I didn't know that you, you weren't able to see it. So how do we zoom it now? So we'll... Okay, nice. Sorry. No, it was his turn. Injection increase. Yeah, it's people invest more money in banks and building societies. So there's something increasing, but is this in injection or? So let's let's move back into the graph here. Where do you save? Which part of the graph are you saving? Where are your savings are going? Lower part or high upper part? to the right, you know, right-hand side. So focus on this side. Savings are here. So part of your money is going into saving, not into the economy. So what, what do we call that? So then it's a withdrawal, yeah. Withdrawals are increasing, right? Yeah, people are saving in building society. So they're putting money for future consumption not consuming today, so they're withdrawing money from the economy as a result. Okay, next. Withdrawals are increasing, yeah. Uh, we don't know that part though, because it's up to the banks to invest that money or not. So we, we, we only know that people are increasing, people are spending, oh, sorry, saving, that's it. They will use it, but we don't know if they use that money that we invest saved. Will that, you know, the question is, if it's in a recession, it's likely that whatever savings you have will stay in the bank because banks don't lend in the recession, very rarely. In boom times, whatever the money comes in will go out because they know that the economy is doing well, they get their money back if they lend at a higher rate, so they lend. So it really depends on situation, but we don't not, we don't have to overthink here. If you do, then we are making mistake, making an error in our judgment. Okay, um, indebtedness. Sorry. So in response to concerns about levels of indebtedness, households increase precautionary savings. Um, so, uh, savings are increasing. Yes. Increase. Hmm? increase. increase. They're saving. They're withdrawing from the economy because of anxiousness, anxiety in the society about the uh, uh, levels of in indebtedness. So in terms of the increase in decrease, does it mean the withdrawals increasing, not that the... So look at this. So the saving here, instead of consuming, they're putting more money into savings. So that's withdrawal of the money out of the economy. So if it was CD, it would be going back to the firm. Firm would pay it as a salary and could come back to households. But now more of it is put, being put into the banks. And we don't know if the banks will spend it. Yeah? And if you read the question, it says, what does it say here? Somewhere. In each case, well, uh, in each, assume that this is the only chance, so we don't, expect others to change, so keep everything constant, yeah? Okay, next question. Now, I would suggest that we leave this and go to question five. What do you think? Because we, we, I like discussion questions, but we only have one hour. 
and I want you to do some exam type questions as well. So number five is something Oh, number five type questions are some ones that you need to be uh, studying more for exam revision. Don't, don't know if it was in the receipt or main exam, but something like this will be in the macro part. Okay, number five. Now, we'll, if you have time, we go to four or remaining as well. Uh, assuming that injections are constant all, at all levels of national income at 200 billion, Complete the following table. So this is the table here, which I'm going to copy and put somewhere else. I think that would help me to organize better and not crowd the screen with lots of writing. So calculate the marginal. Also, first let's cal uh, complete the paper, uh, table. So we know one thing is that the uh, injections are the same. At, and so this is the income level when we were poorer. Our income is rising now, but we keep investing in the, the same amount. At all income levels, it's the same. Yeah, that's done. And if you look at this case here, what it is is this. Somewhere here is the 200,000. This is our J. This is, by the way, this is a 45 degree line. We'll come to later. Uh, did I scroll down? No? Right. Withdrawals. Now we need to calculate withdrawals. How do we calculate withdrawals given this information? Is there sufficient information to calculate withdrawals? Let's look at withdrawals. So what is withdrawal here? Look at this picture. You can diff you can guess what it is. Income. Exactly. It's income minus CD. Withdrawals are income minus CD because income received is basically either spent on consumption of domestic goods or withdrawn from the economy. Can you see that point, everyone? Yeah, that, that's the intuition here. That's the uh, formula we need to use now. Is everyone with me? Because I can hear the um, these people talking at the back. <clears throat> okay, so since withdrawals, so let's do this here. Since withdrawals are income minus CD, for the first one, it's 400 minus 400. That's zero. This is 100. That is, oh, this is 1,000, so this is 200. So there's a typo, guys. Uh, zero is missing. Uh, this is 300. I will update now. And this is 600. Right, and expenditure. What is the formula for expenditure from the lecture, remember? Expenditure, so we go back to this graph again. Expenditure is now, uh, where's my cursor? Okay, okay, here, this part here. Consumption plus all these injections. So that's the expenditure. Oh, sorry guys, what? Where's my, did I? It's going to the top. Right, so, so this is uh, consumption plus injection. So how much will that be then? 600, thank you. And this? Isn't it uh, 700 plus 200? Yeah.
Now, did all understand it? Did all of you understand it? Have you got yeah. Did you miss that explanation? Okay, let's go back. Sorry, uh, it's it's this one here. I, I keep going back. So I'm going to copy this. Maybe we'll stop here and exp explain you a little bit more about this point. Notice this. We have just done that. It's Y, national income, yeah? This is CD. This is uh, inputs, expenditure, net taxes, net savings. And here we have uh, experts, which is basically X, uh, investment and government spending. Spending, yeah, the word spending. So now these sum together equal to this. Why? Because the income goes out as a consumption or withdrawal. Now these together then is expenditure. Spending by government, spending by private firms, spending by foreigners plus household spending. Yeah? Okay, so that is, makes it clear to you. Now we can start. I think I will not draw the graph. You do, you do the drawing if you want. That's the mechanical thing you can do anytime at home. You don't need to use any rocket science here. So we will fill up the form and answer the answer the uh, questions using the values in the table now. Okay, so that's why we cal that's how we calculate the aggregate expenditure now. Now, next, calculate the marginal pro propensity to consume domestically produced goods. Do you remember the formula for marginal propensity to consume from the lecture? MPC equals marginal propensity to consume equals yeah thank you income yeah what does it measure in in words please anyone help me yeah how much you mean consumption CD domestically made yeah so it's it measures the fraction of additional income we earn that goes into consumption, yeah? So, if you look at this uh, table, you see that the change in C and change in income is constant. Here, the change in income is 400 all the time. 400. 400 at all income levels. Consumption in uh, change in C then is 300. You can see that, yeah? It's 300. So you can take any value here. And that means 3 fourths, basically. 300 over 400. Or maybe I'll just draw, write it, complete it, just in case. Which is 3 fourths. Which means we're spending 75% of our income on consumption. Every pound you earn, uh, only a quarter of it is saved or withdrawn whatever the form of withdrawal. So that's our marginal propensity to consume. Now next, on the diagram, below label the line shown and then plot CDJ. Now, all you need to do is just use this data to plot. And I think we can do this easily. Yeah, can I skip that or should, do you want me to show it? You can label them properly. It's, a, it's just an exercise you just need to fit the lines here. It won't be that difficult. Because we don't need the line to answer the next question. What will be the equilibrium level of income? So look at the table now for that. Level of income, equilibrium level of income. When do we receive, uh, achieve equilibrium usually in macroeconomy? From last week's lecture, guys. What's the equilibrium level? Uh, when is it aptitude? that it's either W equals J, or not either, and E equals Y. 
aggregate expenditure equals income or withdrawals are equal to injections because both of them have CDs that they cancel out. So J and W and J <coughs> equals, so it's this case here, right? Where J equals withdrawals, which is 200, 200, income equals our aggregate expenditure, 1,200. So that's our original equilibrium point. This is where the Y crosses the uh, expenditure line. If you draw it, you will see that. Or J crosses the, uh, or W crosses the expenditure line, uh, injection line. Okay. Next, what are the withdrawals and injections at this level? 200 each, yeah? So you just, we don't even have to do that, but just in case, 200. Next, plot the withdrawals line on the diagram. If you go to the, uh, do it at home just as a practice, this may be needed. Um, somewhere here, they will be crossing there, withdrawals. Yeah, that's the withdrawals. I, I sketched it, but you can be accurate if you do it at home. Equilibrium point was 1,200, yeah? So next. You should now be able to see that there are two ways of finding the equilibrium, yes, we discussed that earlier. Level of national income, still referring to the table and diagram above, assume now that the injections increase by 200 billion, not 20 billion, that's another typo. Otherwise, this thing doesn't work. Sorry guys, I will update it. At all levels of national income. Now, plot the new injections line on the diagram. If you plot it, you need to work out the uh, injections line once again. So for that one, you create an, a new table, J. So injections will now be 400 because at all income levels, it increased by 200. So this is 400. This is 400, 400, 400, 400, and 400. Yeah, it increased by 200 pounds. Um, then I would have to draw it, well, just in case, to this line here. This would be our new injections. Notice that the uh, equilibrium point now changed to this. So it was originally here. This was our equilibrium output. This, was, this is now the new. Oh, sorry. This is something new here, not, e not this one. So I need to find it now. Let's go and find what it is. What the equilibrium output now? Plot the to new total expenditure line. So the expenditure line shifts by 200 points to the left and changes the uh, equilibrium point. We don't need it. Make the new equilibrium level of income, national income now. Mark, sorry. So equilibrium national income now. Wh which one is it, guys? You mean this? Yeah, 2000. This is 2000, yeah. That's because now new injections, which are 400, equals now new this. And our expenditure goes up by 200, so makes this one with this 200 as well. Uh, sorry, 2000. This will be 2000 here. Yeah? So did we draw that one correctly then? Let's have a look. My drawing was showing something else though. The crossing should have been here. So it looks like I got the gradient wrong when I sketched it. So, is it? yeah, it, it should, this line should... Uh, 200, it's just that one is a typo there. There's a typo there, sorry. So the crossing point is actually further down here. It's somewhere here now. I apparently... Circled it earlier correctly, mistakenly. <laughs> Are you with me, everyone? Is this clear? Right, so 2000, 2000. Now, the interesting bit here. How much has national income increased by? By how much? 
equilibrium income originally was 1,200. The new equilibrium income is now 2,000 pounds. So that's an 800 pound increase in our equilibrium income. So uh, delta I, uh, sorry, Y is now 800 pounds. How many times bigger is the rise in national income than the rise in injections? So, what was the rise in injections? 200. Rise in income is that. So, um, we divide rise in eight, um, change in income over change in injections. That's the multiplier. Multiplier effect. So income multiplied by four. So if investment increased by one pound, income increased by four, four pounds. Every pound leads to a uh, four, four pound increase in income. Any question on this now, guys? If, is everyone? Happy with the results and clear, no questions, nothing. Okay. Number six now. If the multiplier is five and the government decides to increase its expenditure by 10 million by now, okay, 10 million, by now, much will, much will national income increase? By how much, sorry? By how much will national income increase before equilibrium is restored? So multiplier is 5, and government expenditure increased by 10. So government expenditure multiplier is 5. By how much should the income change or, or increase, in other words, to restore the equilibrium? The art of answering this question includes Carefully reading the question again. Yeah, go ahead. Do you, did you want to answer the question? No? Okay. Who wants to answer the question? Did you guys understand the question? That's probably the problem here. You didn't, yeah? That's good. We're learning. Right, so it's, it says if the multiplier is 5, so multiplier m, so in this case I think k, the book uses the... Uh, the letter K, so let's move it down so that we have some space for writing. So it says K equals 5 and government decides to increase its expenditure by 10 million, so change in G is 10. Now, by how much will national income increase before equilibrium is stored? So, K here, multiplier of Question, multiplier, um, multiplier what? Um, government multiplier, sorry. Government multiplier question is, or the uh, formula is change in income over change in government. Plug in the numbers, find the income. Earlier it was change in uh, injections, which overall J. Here we're looking at the G only. So, 5 equals change in income over 10. Change in income is then 50. 50 million. That gives us a, a, a multiplier 5. Equal to 5, yeah? So, a pound injection in the form of government expenditure into the economy increases the income eventually by 5, by a factor of 5. Now, this is... Uh, an interesting one. Does anyone want to explain why an increase in injections will lead to a multiplied rise in the national income? Yeah, go ahead. Does it want, does it want words or like equation? You can write, write it in words or say something in words. What's the, uh, what's the uh, mechanism here? How it works? Yeah, yeah, paid out, yeah. Basically, if you put a pound into economy, it's the income of someone. 
firm pays as an income, part of it as a salary to someone, part of it goes into investment, part of it goes somewhere else, rent payments. Now five, ten people received income from your pound. Yeah, and government injects billions a year. So this is a huge amount of income spread in the economy. So if I receive salary from that increase in the injection, I will spend it at Tesco. So Tesco is getting, my consumption from Tesco is higher now. My purchase from Tesco is higher now. Then Tesco pays the farmers for the eggs and milk. And farmers buy food for the chicken or fertilizers for the land. Fertilizer guys will buy local whatever it is. They pay land tax and all this stuff. And that's my story now. You see the income? That trickles down to the bottom. That single pound is trickling down to the bottom from the government, yeah? Then the firm who received money from government, let's say construction company, then hires a truck from a truck company, which then pays out of that rent income to the uh, well, employees, workers. They will receive income, they also go to Tesco then, or buy a car, folks, uh, Land Rover Jaguar, for example. Yeah, that is a British uh, income. Uh, British, uh, so that, you see the income increasing now? That pound is just increasing the income of so many people. Is multiplied effect now here. And 10 million here, 10 million injection in government spending is overall, uh, oh, uh, increasing the overall income in the end by five times. It's a multiplied effect as a result. Okay, so that, that brief couple of sentences would be a good, good answer here. Um, moving on, next question. Uh, C is a bit different. Please read it in the meantime. Right. The formula for the multiplier is one over one minus MPCD or one over one MPW, marginal propensity to withdraw. And is the margin principle okay? Referring back to question four above, what are the values of MPW and MPCD? So question four. Question four. Does it say question four? It means five. Yeah, it must be five. Uh, there's a typo again, which I need to correct. Who wants to answer this question? MPCD and. MPW. Pick two points, pick up two points, for example. Pick up two points. You see, W is increasing by 100 at all levels. So change in W is 100. What is change in income? 400. So we can calculate the MPW here. Right, which is, does anyone want to remind me what the formula was? Yeah. Quarter, yeah? So, okay, let's put the, uh, put the values here. This is 100, this is 400. Quarter. And how about this one? You should help me when I am quiet, guys. <laughs> I'm expecting you to speak. So what's this now? Change in consumption? 300, thank you. And 400, thank you. You see this? Three-fourths. Three-fourths of our income goes to consumption, one-fourth is being saved. Okay. That makes a total income of one, 100%. In question four, what is the value of the multiplier? It's this one, yeah? So, is it four, guys? So we will now use this formula, 
or the other one, either one is fine. So uh, k is equal to 1 over 1 minus mpcd. 1 over 1 minus 3 fourth. That must be 4. So a pound increase in injections. Uh, what is this? Uh, multiplier. A pound increase in our uh, withdrawal here. Is it withdrawal? Interesting. It should be injection here. So in increase our income uh, by a by a factor of four. Interesting. Assuming now that the multiplier is five, as in part A of this question, what are the values of the MPW and MPCD? That is this is easy now for you guys. What do you think? The answer is Yeah. Um, I, let's see if I have the answer here. Yep. I won't solve it, leave it to you. The answer. <laughs> if we can do it, everyone should be able to do it. Because all of us are getting the same education, the same teaching level, and we would expect a normally distributed mark in the end, hopefully. I would still expect a few on the tails of the distribution getting very high marks and very low marks, but pass. But idea here is that since if one or two of you can do it, then everyone should be able to do it. You know, I usually tell the students this thing. There is every sixth student, all, all students are smart, all students are sharp, but we have lazy students and hardworking students. Do you understand that? Everyone is smart. If you were not smart, you wouldn't have been here. You wouldn't have been offered the place, because this has been a, this this university has a very uh, competitive admission process. So everyone is smart. What's missing here is the uh, efforts. If you do efforts, if you put the efforts, you will definitely do very well in this exam or in other exams as well. Of course, occasionally we have sharp students who do very well, ab well above average. But then there are also students like you guys. I mean, so many of you guys are sharp here. I'm not saying one or two of you, a lot of you. It's just we, don't, we need to get that sharpness out of our <laughs> thinking and put it into, a, into practice. I don't know, I don't like kind of thing, doesn't work. Okay, this, this is the end of class, guys. This is a uh, some, uh, advice to you because I, I did my PhD.